Hello again, this time I'd like to explain you uh, how to remotely operate the camera in a much more exhaustive way uh, than, than you can do with the content browser mobile in, in your phone. As you may remember, FX9 is much more powerful than uh, F7 uh, in terms of connectivity, in terms of how I can access to the, to the camera. And, uh, and this is something that may be helpful for you in order to uh, prevent the stuff from touching the camera or many people to be playing around with it or if the camera is in, in a location in which uh, it's not uh, easily accessible. So firstly let me explain the, the stuff that I have here. Uh, I'm shooting with an FS7 uh, whose signal is, is root to, the, to a Sumo 19. So if you see me at some point uh, looking at, the, at this part of the, of the image is due to that because I want to be in frame, obviously. Sorry if I am not totally focused, but <laughs> it's a one-man band and it's a, it's a bit difficult to, to organize everything. And now related to the stuff uh, which is going to be used for this little demo is obviously an FX9. The, one of the outputs, in this case the HDMI with the menus overimposed, is uh, is routed to an Atomos Ninja V or five. Uh, in loop through, I have all the menus here also, and uh, in the left side, in the monitor on the on the left, I have uh, a regular uh, Chrome, my my laptop, and uh, both equipments, both the FX9 and my laptop, are connected to a MiFi or well to an access point that it, it doesn't even need to be connected to the internet because as you will see it's creating a local network and I am accessing in the same network from the laptop to the to the camera. Uh, the main thing I want to demonstrate to you is uh, how to scroll the menus, I mean not only playing with the menus that the Content Browser Mobile offers me but the all the menus that are available in the camera. So for that, firstly, uh, what you need to have is the camera connected to the uh, Wi-Fi network. Uh, it's, it's uh, as I have said, much more powerful than in FS7, so there is a dedicated menu. If you don't know how to do that, please uh, ask me. In this case, I'm since I am going to establish this uh, router as the access point, the camera needs to be in the station mode setting. And from that uh, menu that you can see here, I can scan networks, connect to, to in this case, Huawei 2.4G is the, is the network, and then input the, the password, and OK, done. It's a, it's a quite easy step. So the camera is connected to, to that access point, and what I need to do to organize, to orchestrate all this, this demo, is to know the IP address of FX9 inside of the network. For that, there is a button here in the, in the left side of the camera called Status. And in the Status, uh, sorry, let me go out of the menu, okay? Now, Status. And in Status, you have, uh, as of today, I'm in version 1.04, uh, uh, we have 13 pages of Status. In the 11th one, uh, I can see the network status, and in the wireless LAN uh, table or, or menu, you can see the IP address. As I have told you, this is a local network uh, address because it uh, starts with uh, 192, 168 and other, other things. So that is the address that I'm going to input in my uh, Chrome browser. As you will see, I have been fooling around with it before, so it is uh, recorded in my cache. And now I am entering directly to the, to the menu, but in a, in a normal situation, it will ask you to, uh, uh, there, there's a prompt asking for the user and network. Where to find those uh, parameters? Let me detach or remove the, the status. And you can go to the uh, network uh, menu and then access authentic auth authentication. Over there, the username is admin. I can edit that. And the password is something that I edit every time I use it because uh, I don't remember the one that, or maybe I receive a demo unit and it comes with, uh, with a different uh, password than expected. So in this case, I have inputted admin, admin with capital A and one, two, three. So those are the two parameters that I would be uh, asked to input in a prompt message in, in, in Chrome. At this moment, as I have done that uh, a few minutes, uh, a few minutes uh, earlier, 
I am not asked to do, to do that. So this is one of the interfaces that I can see. I can, for instance, assign different values to the uh, assignable buttons. I can uh, obviously play with the focus iris zoom uh, parameters in the camera. I can even play back with the, with the uh, recorded clips, but I would output them via the regular outputs and the LCD, not via the uh, menu navigation. Remember that for, uh, for having um, a, a little monitor, let's say, you have the content browser mobile, but with this application, as far as I know, you cannot monitor the signal, so you will need an additional cable, as in this case, for instance, uh, to, to know what's going on with the, with the camera. Especially if you are going to play with the menus, you will need to, uh, to have the menus overimposed in one of the, of the outputs in order to know what you are doing with, with them. And you have also the cursor uh, menu, that is, which is the one I'm going to play with. But apart from that, you can do many other things. And one of them, for instance, is uh, this one. You can select the monitoring uh, resolution and, and bit rate. Or something that in the camera is a bit uh, goofy, I would say. It is easier in the content browser mobile, but it's even easier if you have a QWERTY uh, keyboard, which is, for instance, setting an FTP or, or a server or a service that you can uh, use with the camera. In this case, uh, this, uh, this could be the screen in which I could, uh, I could adjust the FTP uh, parameters to which I could uh, upload the proxies or the high-res uh, files. And even the proxies can be automatically uploaded into, into that. But this video is not about that. So I'm going to go back to the, uh, to the cursor uh, screen, let's say, and now you will see here I have the menus from the camera directly and here I have the remote uh, browser. So for instance if I want to go back this is the way to play with the, with the menus and I can have access as you can see to all the menus in the, in the camera. Beware of one thing, obviously if I go to the menu in which I overimpose the um, the, the menus on the output and I remove that, that information, obviously I will be lost. So it is very typical to, uh, to use one output for the menus and unless you are recording inside of the camera and then you can use the same screen, but if you are going to route the signal to a switcher or a matrix, for instance, you will need to have another output. I recommend that to be the uh, SDI-1 because in this camera, as in FS7, SDI-1 is clean signal, SDI-2 can be with uh, overimposed uh, menus, as it can be also the HDMI uh, output, which is the one I'm using right now. So be careful with that, because at some moment maybe you lose the menus and you don't know at which point or in which uh, menu or submenu uh, are you. So uh, simply I wanted to, to show you this. It can be useful for you and, and you can play with all the parameters in the camera without touching it. So thank you for watching and I hope it's uh, useful. Thanks.